Hey hey guys, it's Steven here and welcome back to another Android TV Box review and today we're going to have a look at the Droidbox T8S. So well, I'm pretty sorry that I'm late with this review but um, I had some problems with the box. Um, actually not with the box itself but with the um, power adapter which you can see right over here. And I had the problem that it came with the UK power socket connector. The adapter didn't fit so I ordered an adapter, doesn't fit in my power socket and you know it takes always time to get those things. But now I finally have everything to do the review and today I want to present you this little box. So what's so special about it? Now the cool thing is um, it runs OpenELEC and OpenELEC is an embedded operating system built around Kodi and um, that's a pretty cool thing because um, it's very easy to use and comes pre-configured, you don't have to do a lot of stuff. Then it comes with an integrated hard drive, you can record your um, streams or whatever you want to, to the hard drive, you can store data on there, so it's a real home streaming machine which is also kind of powerful. Now you will find a link down below in the description if you're interested in this little box. It's around £110 because it's a UK website but I think you can order it almost everywhere. Now regarding the specs, so this little baby comes with a 2.0 GHz quad-core Cortex-A9. Um, it's actually the M-Logic S802. I had a lot of boxes with the chipset and I was pretty satisfied but they run Android 4.4.2 KitKat. You know I had the Transmod Orion, it runs Android 5 Lollipop. And yeah, um, so it's kind of outdated, but I wouldn't say outdated because it also runs OpenMalik, pretty cool thing. GPU, it's Mali 450MP octa-core GPU, which you can also find in a lot of MediaTek chipsets. It comes with 2GB of DDR3, which is more than enough, 8GB internal memory, but a 2.5-inch HDD bay, so you can extend the memory up to 2 terabytes, and that's the best thing. But make sure you get a um, 2.5-inch hard drive, which has a maximum height of 9.5 millimeters, otherwise it won't fit. Alright, but also it has an SD card slot, so up to 32 gigs can be also extended here. Then it comes with XBMC Kodi 15.0 pre-installed, that's a pretty cool thing. Then it supports 4K video playback, we'll later have a look at the performance, so H.264 decoding, then it's dual band Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and also we have um, a power consumption below 10 watts and a weight of around 350 grams, all around with HDMI, with USB ports, and it also should support H.265 decoding, not really sure about the performance on the M-Logic S802, but well, um, we're going to test this here in this review. Now if you want to see an unboxing of this device, I also did an unboxing, it's on my channel so make sure you check it out, the link is down below so I won't go through all the close-ups of this little baby because it would take too much time so I just want to get directly started, put this little baby onto my 4K Samsung monitor and then we can see the performance of this little beauty. So let's go guys! Alright guys, so the TV box is now connected to my test setup and I can quickly show you my setup here. So we have here a 4K Samsung monitor, older generation Samsung monitor, you will find a link down below. But well, um, it can do 4K at 30Hz, unfortunately not more, so only on the display port, but on HDMI we have 4K with 30Hz. And that's what the box can do, so the box is hooked up to the monitor and to a lot of peripherals. So let's have a look at that. As you can see it's up and running, so we have here um, the time, so basically it always displays the time here. When it's booting it says boot and also some other things. The the IR receiver and here we have a little um, LED which indicates that the device is on. So it's blue when it's on and it's red when it's off. Then as you can see we have here a lot of connectors. So basically um, we have here a, an SD card connected to the device. It's a 32GB Samsung SD card. We have here three USB ports and I have here my receiver for the remote control. Then here mouse and keyboard. On the back side we have HDMI connected, Ethernet, um, the power connector, I'm not using the AV out because I'm using HDMI and also not the optical audio out because I don't have a home amplifier. But well, um, the Wi-Fi antenna is connected and that's basically everything. I just want to give you an idea what you can do with the box. So we have here a couple of different remotes, um, air mouses, so gyroscope mouse. You can get them really cheap, like $10 or whatever. And they do a pretty good job because it's just like a Wiimote, you can use it like that to control your TV and that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, Bluetooth is not working so I tried the Bluetooth speaker but um, Bluetooth on the Droid box wasn't working for me. Then we have the external hard drive for sure. If you want to use that as a media server or whatever, you definitely need support for external hard drives. 
Here we have a little device to measure the power consumption. So as you can see, currently here in idle it's between 7 to 10 watts and that's a very nice power consumption. Just the only bad thing is that they shipped it with a UK adapter, so I have to use several adapters now to get this connected to my power socket. This is the only bad thing here right now, but as you can see I can use mouse and keyboard just like on a normal computer. So well, we're recording with the Hoposh um, capture card, which you can see right over here. And yeah, that's basically it. So now I would say, let's go and let's jump directly into Android and let's see what we can find here inside. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're now here in Android 4.4.2 on the mini PC or TV box, however you want to call it. And yeah, this is the home screen. So we have here some very cool launcher, which is really easy to use. It basically has here a couple of pages like um, here music or media, games and the home screen. And here on the home screen, um, for sure, you have um, different, um, I would say, widgets. So here you can see the time, your location by the network. You can easily start XBMC, AK, Kodi. And we have here also a lot of icons. And here also a little button to clean up the memory, so to free some RAM. And well, in idle, so if you don't have any background applications running, um, the device itself consumes like 30% of the RAM for the ROM here and um, caching the background applications. Okay, um, as always, we have an Android status bar, so I'm currently using here my mouse, so I just have to um, go in there, swipe down, and here I can see my notifications. As you can see, super SU, the binary needs to be updated, but well, this device is rooted, which is pretty cool, and also needed to um, boot open Alec and recovery and all that. Okay, then here on the right side we have quick toggles. Bluetooth is now working in the latest version, so in the first firmware revision it was not working and I wasn't able to connect to my um, speaker, but now it works really good and I'm connected to my Bluetooth speaker. Here we have Wi-Fi, and I have to say Wi-Fi also increased a lot. It's really nice to see that Droid boxes and publishing updates which are really improving the overall features and yeah, the whole experience of the device. We have here also location by network and here we can access the settings and that's what we'll do right now. So here you can see the full Android settings and first of all I want to talk about Wi-Fi. Now this device um, supports dual band and here you can see my home network. I'm getting excellent signal strength, um, 52 Mbits, well on some devices I get more but it's really okay. Um, we have a pretty big antenna, for sure the 5 GHz network here as always has a lower signal and um, yeah I'm not connected to it right now but it detects it so it's working. Now, um, the Wi-Fi, I would rate it with 8 out of 10 points. It's not the best Wi-Fi I've seen on a TV box, but it's quite decent. Bluetooth is working. I've paired it with my Bluetooth speaker because my monitor um, has no integrated speakers and I don't have a home amplifier. Yeah, well, Ethernet, so this is also working if you don't want to use Wi-Fi. And here we have portable hotspot, VPN and all the other crap. Okay, um, then here we have storage, so let's have a look at that. Now the internal storage is very low actually. The total space partition is 5.35 gigabytes. But well, the internal partition is actually not needed. So you have your 3 gigabytes, but well, you really don't need that because here you have USB storage and this is the SATA hard drive, which you can also extend like you can have more memory. And here we have 150 or 147 gigabytes of usable memory. That means you can install everything, you can store music on there, movies, whatever. So it's a perfect home media server. Here my SD card, 32 GB Samsung SD card also gets detected properly and later we'll play back some, yeah, some movies from the SD card. Okay, um, yeah, um, we have here apps running in the background, so let's check out here the memory consumption of the ROM. Here we get 560 megabytes used and you still have 1 gigabyte of free RAM. And you see there are actually a lot of background applications, holo, whatever. Not really sure what some of the things are, but yeah. Um, we'll have a look at that just a little bit later and here you can see all the applications. But there is no real chunk installed, just some apps I have never heard about, but well, they're quite okay. Then we have a permission system as always, um, language and input, so um, the box is multi-language, not the full Android language pack. Here you can now see the supported um, languages, so as you can see, not all, but really, really many, and most of them um, are in there, so the most important ones. Okay, um, I can use the on-screen keyboard, I can use the remote control, I can use a hardware keyboard, so everything is possible on this device. Here under about the phone, so actually under about the TV box, because this is an Android version modded, we can see it's Android 4.4.2 T8S, and well, this is definitely the latest version which you can get right now because this box has no update to Android Lollipop. 
Okay, um, that's basically it. Then let's go back here and let me show you here some something more in the menu. And well, we can go here to the menu and here you can see all the installed applications. First of all, I want to say that we have an OTA updater. And yeah, um, I had three OTAs. So um, three OTAs in three months, that's pretty good. That's one update per month, at least right now. Now, when everything is fixed, there won't be so many updates anymore. But I have to say, um, this box runs totally stable, um, keeps yeah the temperatures cool, and also has really good performance. So let's talk a little bit about the applications, which you can see here. Ace Player, Airplay, so all that was pre-installed, basically Movie Player. We'll have a look at Movie Player back in a second. It supports Airplay. Now straight off the box you can use, for instance, your iPad, iPod or iPhone to wirelessly stream music, photos or videos to this device here. And also Screencast is working, which I will show you later because I don't have an iPhone. Okay, um, yeah, benchmarks, blah blah blah. Here we have the browser. And well, um, I have to say, um, browsing the web, no problem at all. I hope my keyboard is working. And and there we go. So let's go here to YouTube. And no, I want to use the browser, not the YouTube application. And rendering pages, so um, websites, if you want to surf from your couch on your TV, no problem at all. Also, for instance, um, watching videos on YouTube, that's no problem at all. You can do that in full screen, maximum resolution, um, 4K. And yeah, I will just don't play back the movie here right now or maybe without audio because otherwise I will get a copyright strike. But well, um, I have to say movie playback performance on full HD is super awesome and 4K not that good but still very nice and you will see it a little bit later when we do the movie test. But I have to say um, browsing the web, um, totally awesome, very smooth. Different browsers, Chrome also pre-installed and here we have the Droidbox Market. Now the Droid Box Market, it's um, something like an alternative to the Play Store, but not a real alternative because there are just um, some applications which are useful to have on a mini PC. But still, you can directly install, for instance, here the Google Play Store from um, the Droid Box Market. You can install Netflix, the correct edition here, which is also a bit optimized, and that's really, really cool. So um, that's something which is really nice. You see that they are pushing a lot of effort into their software, and this is something I appreciate. Because, for instance, Transmart, also nice mini PCs or TV boxes, but they, they don't have any software support or great support like Droidbox here. It also comes with Droidbox Share. Basically, this is very cool. You can use your smartphone as a remote control. Basically, you just have to scan the QR code here or download the application, and yeah, um, this application allows you to fully remote control your TV box. For sure, we have file managers, um, ES, normal HD browser, um, normal file browser, and you see a lot of stuff pre-installed. Film on live TV, Flix Universe. I've never heard of this because yeah, I'm not based in the USA. In the USA, so I guess Flix is something from the USA. I don't know. I've never heard of that. Hide man to hide your IP. Not sure why you would need that on a TV box. Um, this is some kind of browser I've never heard of. Honestly, um, I, I'm not really using that. Husham.com. What the fuck is that? Yeah, it comes with Kodi for Droidbox. So this is an optimized version of Kodi, which was made for the Droidbox, a little bit customized. And well, you can see um, it grants root access, so this is fully working. We can have a look here at um, the system. And um, sorry, I'm not so familiar. Yeah, system info, here it is. So um, here we can also check out the Kodi version if I'm right. And there we go. So just give me a second. Yeah, it's Kodi 14.2. So this is not um, the latest version right now, which is, uh, I guess, 15.1 or 15.2. So Isengard, and this is. Yeah, the older version of Kodi, but um, it's a little bit optimized here for the Droid Box. Okay, we'll have a look at the movie playback just a little bit later. So this is just the um, the Droid Box version of Kodi, but um, there's also um, Open Alec, which is basically an operating system built around Kodi, and I'll later show you how to boot into that. It comes with um, all the Google applications pre-installed. It comes with Maps. It comes with the Play Store. Um, you don't need to worry about that, and if it's not on there, you can download it from the Droid Box Market. Now, um, this is a 4K player. We'll later have a look at 4K playback, music player as always, and there's Netflix. 
people always ask me, um, does Netflix work in full HD or 4K? I have to say, nope. Um, there is, I think, a software workaround for that. But on Android devices, it's limited to run, I think, only in 480p or 720p. So if I try to play back now here Family Guy, which I actually shouldn't because of copyright, um, then you will see that it's kind of, yeah, it's not really sharp because the resolution is not full HD. But well, I have to say, um, you can use it for Netflix if you don't care about the lower resolution and maybe there's some software workaround about that, but you can check it out on XDA, there's several threads about it. Okay, next thing, the Play Store. As always, um, this is really compatible with all things on the Google Play Store. Maybe not some special applications, but I have to say, I could download my latest games, I could check out most of the things here, re-racing, modern combat, had no issues with that, and that's really good. So, um, you can really enjoy all your Android applications on your TV. PPoE, if you need that for Ethernet, we have Team Viewer. <laughs> um, this is also working. And here we have the Reboot Manager. For instance, the Reboot Manager allows you to do a hot reboot, to reboot recovery, to reboot bootloader if you want to flash it, or here you have settings, or you can just power it off. So, really cool. It's rooted and it allows you to do so many stuff to um, boot directly in the recovery, which I've actually um, just done once on an Android Mini TV box. Okay, here we have a quick button for recovery reboot. For instance, to do an update from the SD card or whatever. We have here um, the normal settings for the Mbox. Um, I can show you that. So here you can see Wi-Fi once again. So that are the basic settings. Um, here you can also switch the um, display output resolution. Um, it should be here, I guess, on the, uh, yeah, the yeah display. Sorry, guys. Um, it's currently stuck on full HD 60 hertz because we're recording with my capture card. But um, later we'll switch to 4K. All right. Um, here are also the settings for digital audio output, which I couldn't test because I don't have a home amplifier. Here under other you can see TADAS Android version 4.4.2, kernel version blah blah blah, but the system update in um, the settings here was not working for me, so I had to use the OTA update application. What you can see is that it's pre-rooted, so we have SuperSU here um, installed, just need to update the binaries, but you see for instance Kodi for Droidbox, OTA update, those switch to malloc, they need root access in order to work. Okay, um, yeah, we have here switch to open Alec. Um, I can show you that quickly because the rest here is just TAT, YouTube, and update. All right, guys, so we're now here in open Alec. Now, open Alec, it looks like Kodi as you can see because it's an operating system built around Kodi. So here you can see about OpenAlex. So OpenAlex stands for Open Embedded Linux Entertainment Center. It's basically a minimal Linux distribution um, built for Kodi Media Center. So that's a real operating system, so you don't have Android in the background, you just have um, yeah, the basic Linux kernel and everything running. And um, this can load up Kodi with all those background applications which you have in Android. So what does this mean? Now, um, overall better performance, you can boot straight directly into OpenAlex, really cool thing. And well, you can rebuild your console just with one simple click, and boom, you're an open alloc. So if we check out um, the system info, then you will see that we basically have here way less memory consumption, so 8% of the RAM is used, and this is almost nothing. In Android, you have like 50-60% when code is running. Then also the CPU load is way, um, way lower, so we can see that one core is almost deactivated all the time, the other core goes up to 20% in idle. So this will give you an overall better movie playback experience. It's based on Kodi 15.2 Isengard, so the latest version right now, and this is just super awesome. Now the only problem I've had with OpenAlloc is that I couldn't connect to my Bluetooth speaker. Seems to be some issue, I'm not really sure why, but when I try to connect, it doesn't matter which one, Xiaomi Bluetooth speaker, UE bottle, it just can't um, connect and I wasn't able to establish a connection. But also it could be a software issue, I really don't know if it's the box or the, the, um, the OpenAlloc ROM here. I have have actually no idea. But well, um, what I will do right now, I'll just disconnect the capture card so we can try out 4K and let's have a look at the movie performance here in OpenAlloc. Alright guys, I've now switched to 4K resolution, so the output of the Droid Box is 4K here on my 4K monitor. Now let's talk about the media performance. Netflix, very smooth but only low resolution. Also here in the default browser and in the default YouTube application, you just have a maximum of 720p. For sure there's a workaround for this, but um, in the default applications here, just 720p. And well, as you can see, the movie playback is quite smooth. That should actually be 4K, but well, I can only choose 720p here, and yeah, um, no problem at all. To 
to watch YouTube movies here in the browser or in the YouTube application. It's also kind of smooth um, even though the box um, outputs 4K here to the monitor. Okay, that's regarding YouTube and Netflix, but um, I would say let's go back and let's have a look here at Kodi. And this is Kodi for Droidbox. So it's um, an older Kodi version with super, um, super user access. And well, it's 14.2, so it's not 15.2. Um, later we'll start um, Open Alec. There you can see the latest Kodi version. But I have to say, first of all, I want to check out here in Android the movie playback, so how smooth it is. And this is the internal hard drive SDA1. So SDB1 is, for instance, my USB drive. And I have here, for instance, the Hobbit 4K um, trailer, and there we go. And this is an um, H.264 decoded um, file, as you can see here. And yeah, um, the movie playback is absolutely smooth. Also no audio distortion, and it runs here on 4K absolutely nice. You can see the resolution, it doesn't drop any frames, it doesn't skip any frames. And yeah, also the bitrate here, pretty constant, so that looks really nice. And I have to say, um, this is a box where I really can enjoy 4K movie playback. This is really, really smooth. Okay, this is for H.264 decoding. Um, we can also quickly go back and I can show you, for instance, another file, which is H.265. This would be Tears of Steel or Sintel. And let me quickly show you that. So um, H.265 is a little bit too heavy for the box. I have to say it handles it really bad. In Kodi there's not even a picture here in 14.2. And also the 4K player, if I can show you that. Um, yeah, we have to go back here. Then I can show you in the 4K player the H.265 um, playback. And there we go. So we can try a different one like Sintel. And this is also H.265. But you will see that performance really sucks. So. Okay, here's a black screen once again. So sometimes it starts to play back it, sometimes that's just a black screen. And there we go, let's try Tears of Steel. Yeah, resume. And yeah, um, there you can see that the H.265 um, decoding is really bad actually. So yeah, it's a very stuttering picture here in 4K. Full HD resolution is, is okay um, if you have some good files, but well, here you can see on 4K um, absolutely no chance, so the hardware is here too slow for that. Okay, H.264 runs really good, H.265 really laggy. I have, for instance, the Ozen 720p H.265 movie, which runs way better, but on 4K, I would say um, forget it. I will now reboot into OpenAlex, so I can do it right over here, and there we go. Alright guys, we're now here in Open Alec and um, yeah, it's 4K resolution as you can see, 30 um, hertz refresh rate. And um, yeah, what the fuck is Open Alec? So let me quickly show you that. So let's go here to Home and here we have Open Alec. And here under About you can see um, it means Open Embedded Linux Entertainment Center. And it's basically a minimal Linux distribution. So um, it's a an, an very small Linux image which runs Kodi, so an operating system built around Kodi actually. You can boot directly into Open Alec. That's a really cool thing. So you start up um, the TV box and it boots into Kodi, so Open Alec. And for instance, um, if we go here to About, so System Info, then here you can see that we have 1.4 gigabyte of free memory. This is really awesome because in Android, for instance, you have like 50% of the RAM used and only like 500 megabytes of free RAM. And also you can see that the CPU usage is very low. And that's a really cool thing because it just boots Kodi with all, without all the crappy Android shit around it. And this gives you some really good performance. Okay, you see it's 4K resolution, everything very tiny. And the only bad thing, I think you can hear it, um, I can't pair my Bluetooth speaker here in OpenAlec. So it seems that there is some kind of issue with the Bluetooth speaker um, or any Bluetooth device here because um, also my Xiaomi speaker doesn't work or my UE bottle from Log Logitech also doesn't work. So it seems to be some issue here. Okay, um, we can have a look at videos, so I will now try to play back here something from my USB drive. For instance, once again, the Hobbit 4K to check this out. And there we go. So, 4K resolution, and there we go. 
and we can have a look here at the frame rate once again. So it's also very smooth movie playback, doesn't skip any frames, doesn't drop any frames and it's a very smooth experience. So I have to say um, watching movies here in 4K in OpenELEC is a little bit more smooth even than in Android because um, first of all you don't have all the Android background applications, you have less CPU load, you have more free RAM and yeah this gives you a very nice video experience. We can also try some H.265 movie if it runs better here in OpenELEC because actually it should and there we go we have tears of steel here once again so in the 4k player in Android this was absolutely laggy and here at least the playback works because in the Kodi version um, made for Droid Box um, the playback didn't even start or it was buffering so slow that yeah that was just a black screen well here the H.265 playback in 4k is better but still very very laggy I mean just check this out CPUs on 100% load are almost 100% and it drops almost every frame and very low bitrate as you can see. So the hardware is too weak for H.265 files here in 4K. That's the only bad thing but it runs H.264 really really good. So if you have a lot of H.264 files in 4K you can enjoy some really really smooth movie playback. Well I also tried um, various other codecs, full HD, 60 FPS, whatever. It runs everything fine except H.265. So actually um, in Kodi even a little bit better than in Android, uh, sorry I mean in Open Alec, and that's a really cool thing because you just um, put up your console if you just use it for Kodi it runs open Alec, and you can just watch all your movies series streams or whatever so very nice movie performance here on the droid box T8S so guys now let me quickly show you some ways on how to control the droid box so for sure you can use a hardware mouse keyboard whatever you want to but you can also use this droid box remote control and yeah I have I think you have to buy it extra but it's a pretty nice thing because you can charge it over mini USB, there's a receiver included which is plugged into my um, TV box and basically it's just like a Blackberry so you have here the keyboard, so it's a hardware keyboard, very small but it's okay to type and actually it's also a lot of fun but well you can get um, those remotes, they're actually universal, you can get it from AliExpress for a couple of bucks too. Here in the middle we have a touchpad and this is basically yeah for the mouse, um, I can quickly show you that, I just have to switch here to the pointer and there we go here's the pointer as you can see and I can move it around here with the touchpad so we have right click we have left click we have slide up and down which is really cool you can use it as a gamepad but only for games like Super Mario or whatever so there's no gyroscope built in and this is the only bad thing so you can't move it and control your TV um, for that you would need to have a gyroscope mouse like this one here and as you can see um, I can basically just move that little thing and then I can move the cursor so that's really really cool that's like a Wiimote and this is the remote plus from Probox so it's from my Probox 2EX and it also comes with a built-in microphone and other cool things um, yeah then the next thing um, is for instance your smartphone so here we have the remote control which is the droid box remote and as you can see um, there's a touchpad on my smartphone so basically um, I could use that too to um, control um, my TV box which is very cool and you have here also the on-screen keyboard so basically you can just type with your smartphone on the TV box um, you can start apps from your smartphone um, yeah here we have normal keys so a d-pad and here we have a bigger touchpad so this is actually really really cool and the remote mode is definitely something which I would use because I really like to control um, the TV box here with my smartphone which is the OnePlus 2. Alright guys then here's a quick gaming test on the Droid box in full HD because on 4K well 3D games do not run really good. So we'll do it here in full HD resolution, some racing game and as I've told you before the Droid box has native controller support for Xbox 360 controllers like here a GameStop controller which is wired um, works also really good, PlayStation 3 controllers and yeah you can use PlayStation four controllers with some application and it's pre-rooted which makes that really easy. So well um, you see external controller detected so I would say let's play. The sound is coming out of the Bluetooth speaker so um, that's without any distortion and also in real time but well um, the game is a little bit laggy so um, 3D games which um, have very good graphics and you play them in full HD it will lag a little bit. On 4K it's almost unplayable so don't try it. Um, it depends on the game for sure. This is a game with very good graphics so there 
there will be some lag in full HD and um, low FPS, but um, yeah, other games are really playable. So let's go and let's drive here a little bit. Um, later we'll also try Modern Combat 5 so you can see a game which everyone knows. And there we go. You see the controller is fully working and that's really cool. So yeah, there are currently many cars and you see the frame rate is not so high. So I would say it's like 22, 25 FPS, something like that. I haven't done, I don't have an FPS counter installed. Um, it's playable, but it's not so much fun because you see there's some amount of lag if you um, play. For sure, um, you can also try to clean up the memory before you start it, but it doesn't make it a lot of a lot better. Maybe one two FPS. And yeah, um, we can also play Modern Combat 5 if you want to. You see um, here in the corners there's some huge amount of lag and FPS drops. So it's not so much fun to play really graphic intense games on the Droid Box. But we can now switch to a different game. So I would say let's play around Modern Combat 5. Okay guys, so here's another gaming test. Here we have Modern Combat 5 with a PlayStation 4 controller. And well, PlayStation 4 controller is also supported. Um, you just have to connect it with a micro USB cable. But you need to reconfigure all the buttons because by default, for instance, shooting here is on the options button and this really sucks. But well, um, the gaming performance in Full HD, it's okay, it's a little bit laggy just like um, the racing game and in 4K it's almost unplayable. In 720p you can actually play almost every game. So also the textures here are not Full HD, but well, we have Full HD resolution on the monitor, so this is why it slows down the game here a little bit, but let's move here around. So you can see the gaming performance and well, I'm shooting with the options button, is crappy. And there we go. So you see it's actually playable and I can enjoy it here even in full HD. In 720p you can really run everything also on maximum details. Um, but on 4K gaming is really not a lot of fun. Like you have real FPS drops, low FPS, 15 FPS or whatever. And then you really notice that the game is laggy. In full HD um, we have some lower frame rate too but it's really playable. And actually I really enjoy to play Modern Combat 5 here on a TV or here on my monitor. It's way more fun than on the smartphone. And yeah, bigger screen, also really nice here with the PlayStation 4 controller. You just need to reconfigure all the buttons because while well, shooting with options, that's not so cool. Okay guys, that's the gaming performance in Full HD, I have to say. It's okay, not the best gaming performance I've seen on a TV box, but really nice um, in 720p and forget it in 4K. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so we're now here at the end of this review and here comes my final conclusion about the Droid Box T8S. All in all, I think it's um, the best TV box or one of the best TV boxes I've ever tested. Great build quality, you can have an internal hard drive, low power consumption, nice performance and well, it doesn't run the latest Android version, it's also not the latest chipset. But I have to say, um, Droid Box really focuses on something which is really important and this is the user experience. And great user experience comes with great software. And I have to say, there are um, frequently OTAs, then um, it's pre-rooted, recovery, everything in there, so um, you can easily reboot the box, dual boot, open Alex. so um, the software itself, it's so great and and really, um, even though it runs an old Android version and all the chipsets, um, the performance is just super great. You have seen 4K playback and it's even better than on some newer TV boxes I've tested. And I have to say, um, this is something I really appreciate that they release updates because you can have the latest hardware, you can buy it for a cheap price. If the software is crappy, if they don't care about the product, the total product will be crappy. But I have to say the T8S is a great TV box. Well, um, I have to say um, the internal partition could be bigger. So maybe make it 32 gigs or something like that. It's not much more expensive, I guess, but you're really um, you're really fast on the limit of the storage. Like I wanted to install a bigger game, it said insufficient storage. Now I have to uh, mod it to make it use the internal hard drive or SD card. But well, um, it's possible. It's Android. You know, everything here is possible. But well, it's not so easy to do for some users, and then they will say, "Hey, what should I do right now?" But yeah, I guess the tutorial is online, so check this out. All in all, the T8S performs really good h264 playback 4k very nice performance also um h265 yeah it's okay in full hd or whatever but in 4k you have seen it's very laggy even here in open alec at least it works in open alec and you have here the latest kodi version which is 15.2 also with frequent updates so really nice actually i enjoyed testing it i can just give the box thumbs up and I'm really looking forward to another product from Droidbox. So thanks for watching this, guys. Have a nice day and check out ChinaDevices.com for more stuff about Android. So see you soon in the next one and bye-bye.